Which do you prefer, efficiency and stability, or power and affordability? These are the main differentiators, with Boost drivers offering longer run times, less heat, and improved sustained outputs, while linear drivers are cheaper, smaller, and often have higher turbo outputs. Noctagon and MSR flashlights have an optional Boost driver upgrade, which makes a good comparison case. Here are two Noctagon KR4 flashlights, which both use 4500K Nietzsche 519A emitters, but one is equipped with the Linear Plus FET driver, and the other has the Boost driver upgrade. While both use the same 3V LEDs, the standard driver wires them in parallel for a 3V load, while the boost-driven version has the four wired in series for a total 12V drive load. So how do these drivers work? Well, a single lithium-ion battery will range in voltage from 2.9V when dead to 4.2V when full, with a nominal level of 3.7V. The linear driver will take the voltage and supply 3V even to the emitter while absorbing the remaining excess voltage and burning it off as heat. The boost driver will instead take whatever the battery is at and convert it to a higher voltage for the LED. Because it's not burning off excess voltage, it doesn't get as hot, and the higher voltage but lower current results in the same power output overall. Because the linear driver version of the light runs at 3 volts, a FET can be used for direct drive on turbo allowing maximum output to be much higher than the boost driver, which is limited to the maximum current its switching converter can deliver. Running off of a fresh cell at startup, I was able to get 2,000 lumens from the boost driver, but subsequent activations produced 1,600 lumens. This is very bright. However, the FET-equipped linear driver blows it away with more than double the output at 4,000 lumens. This is a significant difference, and definitely one worth considering if high output is important to you. However, that's only half the story. Because the boost driver produces less heat for the same output, the light is able to sustain more lumens at the same temperature. When we compare percentage held of initial output, we see a huge increase over the linear driver, with 60% of initial output over the 20% of the less efficient light. Changing this to actual lumens gives us 1000 for the boost driver and 500 for the linear. We are using the same battery in both tests, which naturally means that blasting turbo will result in shorter run times for the boost driver, as its higher sustained output pulls more current from the battery throughout the run. Setting the lights to the same output for the run, in this case 1000 lumens, allows the boost driver to display its efficiency gains in another manner, as it runs at the same output for a whole 40 minutes longer. It's clear that for high sustained outputs, the boost driver is superior while the FED-equipped linear model pumps out significantly more light on turbo. However, just as important as high outputs are the low outputs. Many times it's beneficial to have a light that can produce extremely low outputs for super long run times and for preserving night vision. In this regard, the linear driver again pulls ahead, with a significantly dimmer minimum output, in this case about 6 times lower than the boost driver. Overall, it boasts hugely superior dynamic range, or the range from low to high outputs. The boost driver has another disadvantage. On the lowest mode, it will activate with a brief flash, brighter than the sustained level, which can be counterproductive to preserving night vision. In short, this is not a software, but a hardware issue that is present on many boost drivers and can be difficult to avoid. So ultimately, if moonlight modes are of great importance to you, especially if they're a priority, then the linear driver is the better option here. Finally, it is worth noting that Hank's lights are a bit unstable on their lowest outputs, especially the custom linear drivers he uses. The more generic and nearly retired FET plus 7135 drivers are a bit brighter on minimum levels, but are very stable. Because these lights run Andril, the levels can be adjusted to find the perfect stable zone for your usage. For those who are very familiar with flashlight drivers, you'll note there's a hole here. Buck drivers. Essentially, a buck driver is another type of switching driver, which is the opposite of a boost. It takes the voltage from the battery and drops, or bucks, it down to the forward voltage of the LED. This is also a highly efficient process with most of the same characteristics of boost drivers. Because that driver type is not available in the Noctagon KR4, I cannot directly compare them. It will be mostly the same, but for a different emitter selection. Finally, there are some highly advanced drivers that combine most or all of these different technologies, such as the very cool enthusiast-designed Loom drivers, which offer boost, buck, and FET components. However, that is outside the scope of this video. So, there's an important distinction to make here. This comparison specifically is looking at the two drivers that Hank offers in his flashlights. However, these differences will generally apply to the wider discussion of driver types. 
As for which one you should buy, that really just depends. I find myself carrying the boost driver more often, as it just offers better efficiency and longer run times. Hank charges an extra $13 for the boost upgrade, which is a great value. However, I do find myself missing the super high turbo on this light, and I think there is a very good reason to opt for the linear model, with its significantly higher max output and better moonlight modes. The linear hot rods are definitely more fun, and at the end of the day, I don't think you can go wrong here. All of these drivers are constant current, with no PWM except for the higher FET controlled modes on the linear drivers, but there is visible ripple in the output on the switching drivers when using the lower modes. It's enough to be visible in use, and could be annoying to some users, but it didn't really bother me. The linear driver does not have this flickering effect. Uh, another thing, with this brand specifically, the boost driver takes up more space, of course, and as a result, the overstuffed design has been prone to more failures due to the smaller springs, or in some cases, button contacts in the drivers. It can be said then that the simplicity and size of the linear driver does offer some better reliability as a result. Moving beyond this brand, generally speaking, I am going to recommend and prefer boost drivers, especially if your light is an important and heavily relied upon tool. However, quality boost drivers will cost more, especially drivers with really high dynamic range. Notably, I often see boost driven lights with poor moonlight modes, and just because a light has such a driver does not mean it has been well implemented. It may suffer from poor thermal regulation or other issues. So as always, be sure to check reviews for whatever light you are interested in. Also, as a bonus tip for those looking to purchase a high efficiency light, if it uses an emitter running at 6 volts or higher, and has a single lithium battery, it must be boost driven. Common examples would be lights with the Cree XHP series of LEDs. I will link a few quality boost driven lights in the description below. If you want to watch some reviews of lights with boost drivers, you can check out this playlist here.